Up to now, we've talked about a lot of interesting and useful concepts, but now let's take those and combine them into hydraulic tools, tools we can use to be able to help us understand and operate the pipeline. So when it comes to hydraulic tools, I'm going to talk about three major hydraulic tools. The systems curve, which shows us the pressure required to produce various flow rates for a particular system. The hydraulic gradient, which is the amount of pressure loss per mile for any given system. And it also shows us the amount of pressure in a flat system at any point along the line. Or we can combine that with the hydraulic profile or the systems profile to show us the pressure in the pipeline. And then another thing we'll use, although not particularly a hydraulic tool, is the operating point. That's the rate at which the pump or compressor is going to operate if the system requires a specific pressure. And we'll go through each one of those in turn. So this first one is a systems resistance curve. If we look, what we have is on the left-hand side, we have the vertical axis, which can be expressed in PSI, kilopascals, meters, or feet. So expressions of pressure. On the bottom, then, the horizontal axis is the flow rate in barrels per hour, cubic meters per hour, uh, cubic feet per hour, uh, as the case may be. So what this shows is, if you notice, the system's curve is not a straight line. It is a curved curve. And the reason that it's a curved curve has to do with the equation that we use to calculate pressure loss. If you remember, the velocity is squared in this particular equation. And so the shape of this curve is parabolic. What the system's curve tells us is the amount of pressure required to pump a given system with a given set of, of fluid characteristics or fluid properties at a certain rate. So this is for the entire system, and we define the system as whatever we want it to be. For example, the system may be the pipeline between compressor A and compressor station B, or it can be the entire pipeline from the beginning to the end. But it is for a particular system, and it varies based on if we change the system or even if we change ambient temperatures so that viscosity goes up or density changes. And obviously, if we're pumping crude oil, for example, the system's curve is going to be different than if we're pumping gasoline, and even if we're pumping one type of crude oil versus another type of crude oil. So uh, we looked at here, the system's curve says the flow rate achieved by applying various pressures to a system. And if the system or fluid changes, so does the curve. So rather than talking about a system's curve, we're probably better to talk about a family of curves. So a given system is going to have an envelope of curves. So if you look at this bottom curve, for example, or the one the farthest to the right, this one would represent the lightest material, the least viscous material, moving on the hottest day, for example. And then the one as we move over to the left farther, if we have more viscous or denser fluid, the system's going to, sh going to shift in that direction. 